Good afternoon. I am Wendy Lieber, the co-founder, one of the co-founders of Content Bacon, and I have the pleasure of being with um, the Lamont Academy team, um, Frederick Underwood, who is the principal, and Alfred Cockfield, who was instrumental in getting Lamont Academy as one of Brooklyn's newest charter schools. So say hello, gentlemen. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, hello. hello. So this is going to focus on um, what you need to know next. Um, we had an opportunity in the earlier version, so those, those of you watching who haven't seen um, the first um, video we did on what you need to know now, we'll put a link so you can check that out. But I wanted to reconvene with you both and find out what's been happening at Lamont Academy. And Alfred, I know you were so instrumental in making this happen. So I wanna learn a little bit more about your role and what you're so excited about with Lamont Academy. So um, I'll turn the reins over to both of you to maybe give us give us an update. So thank you very much, Wendy. Thank you for your expertise. My name is Reverend Al Cockfield. I am the founder and executive director of Lamont Academy Charter School. It has been in the works for well over 10 years. We actually yeah. have uh, really been trying to um, educate children in central Brooklyn because we see the, the disparities in instruction for our children, black and brown boys and girls. And so we've been trying to do this for 10 years and we give God thanks and praise that now at this point, we have finally got approved. We got approved October, 2018. I had a great team of people that work with me, some that have been with me for a little bit longer than others on the team. And it's so funny, once I got approved, I thank all the people that were on, on board from 10 years ago till today, because everybody contributed something. And we are people from the community that care about the community. We, uh, every day of our life, we do something that affects change for our community. And so we are finally here. We're getting ready to open. We did a planning year, we took time out. I, I took uh, uh, Fred Underwood, who was on the board as well, planning team, off the board. He came off the board and then I hired him. He's now our principal, we'll be taking care. We have a great team. And it was important to make sure not only that we build a team, but a team that really cares about children. A lot of times we have people who are involved in education who really don't care about children. They just care about getting a check. We wanted to bring people who are hearts and souls in, in the uh, purpose of educating children and meeting them holistically. And so we have a great team. We said we have Fred Underwood, the principal. We have two APs a person for data and professional data, which is unheard for a first year of a school, middle school, sixth grade, which have funding challenges, we decided to invest the money in great and strong leadership and a social worker to meet the child holistically. And so we are on Monday rolling out our summer bridge program for eight days, which gives us a, a, a quick look, a bird eye view of where the child is. If there are some gaps there, which we know there probably are from COVID-19 and children not being able to access to great instruction and the, the, the shift that teachers had to make to be able to go from a classroom, a physical classroom to virtual and remote and what that looks like and to be able to make sure that children get what they need. And so we're doing a summer bridge program. We have three cohorts, one starting on Monday, July 6th for eight days, excluding on Fridays. And then we start the following one on July 20th and then the last one, I think August 3rd. So we're gonna have three cohorts. We're very excited. We are enthused to bring children STEAM, which why STEAM? Only most in the city of New York, I should speak about more than anything, but other parts of the country as well. When there are budget cuts, one of the first things they cut are the arts. Yeah. And so we are purposeful and intentional and deliberate to make sure we meet the child holistically and knowing that arts plays a major role in the uh, progress for our boys and girls. And so we have, we're gonna have a person over the arts, the, a director of arts, and we just go, we're just looking forward to just, just the excitement, you know, talking to parents on the phone the last couple of days, they're excited when they hear about the STEAM program, they're excited about being digital and trying to go paperless and being able, because most schools have a STEM option or STEM, STEM particular program, but not to be full blown STEAM. Right. And so we are really excited and, and really just, just, just overwhelmed that we are here. We've finally reached this day. 
That's fantastic. That's really, really exciting. I can feel the enthusiasm. Can you say a little bit more about the advantages that kids and, and you know, families that have their kids involved in STEAM programs have over you know, other kids that, that may not get exposure to the same type of, of expertise and, and you know, niches like um, you know, science, technology, engineering, arts, and, and math? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and again, my name is Frederick Underwood. I'm the founding principal of the Vermont Academy Charter School, and I'm excited to be back here again. And, uh, and so one of the biggest differences um, we believe um, between STEM and STEAM is that STEM explicitly focuses on scientific concepts, while STEAM allows for um, us to uh, have an inquiry-based, problem-based um, approach and uh, it infuses or implements um, some creativity with respect to solving problems. And so um, we want our students to, uh, as we prepare them for the future and to being part of the future workforce, we want them to understand that, that we look at problems, um, not particularly just um, from a strictly scientific perspective, but we want them to ask what if when they're solving problems. Yeah. And so STEAM, when we incorporate humanities like language arts, dance, arts, drama, music, visual uh, arts. Um, uh, when we incorporate that in there, it'll push our students to, uh, to imagine and to ask that question, what if, when they're um, attacking the curriculum that we uh, prepare for them. Wow, that sounds amazing. So if you all, you know, one of the reasons that we're doing this is, you know, we want the word out there as much as possible that Lamont Academy is accepting applications if you, know, you all had an opportunity to sit in front of all the parents of sixth graders in the area, what are some things you want them to know? What are some things you want them to do? You know, just what, 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 what can, you, can you say to make sure they, they understand this amazing asset in their community now? So I think one of the things that's very important for parents to know is that we're committed. We're really committed to meeting each child where they are and helping to move them forward. And why is that important? A lot of times as we make calls to parents, as we engage parents, they have concerns about maybe their child was bullied in their elementary years. Maybe their child didn't get the attention that they thought they should have gotten. And we're committed to making sure that doesn't happen. Lamar, the word Lamar is a Hebrew word for learning and teaching. And we believe that a teacher has not taught until students learn. And what that means is that we are committed in making sure that we're not going to let a day go by if a child is not getting the concepts, not understanding, to continue to go to the next day as if everyone's on the same page. No, we're committed to bringing every child along through the process. And so that's important to parents to know that their child is getting the nurture and the instruction that they need to be successful. Incredible. And I would add that we would say to our students that you're empowered. Um, student empowerment is very important. We want our students to ask insightful questions. We want them to explore the disciplinary boundaries that are set before them. We want them to confront the conventional ways of thinking and we empower our students to let their voices be heard, uh, not just from a curriculum perspective, but from an organizational and a leadership perspective. Fantastic. So for those students who aren't lucky enough to be in one of the cohorts this summer, um, what are some tips, what are some resources for you know, parents and students um, going through the summer in these you know, still strange, strange times to, to make the most of their summer, both from a learning perspective and play perspective? I, absolutely. I think that we want uh, to avoid what we call in education the summer slide. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to empower our parents to, uh, I would recommend six books over the summer. I mean, minimally six books. Um, research will show that if they're reading, if our children are reading uh, at least six books and that, uh, and that if they um, inquire with the uh, library, the local library in their uh, neighborhood, perhaps even go online, they can assist with uh, a, a book list that will uh, be appropriate, age appropriate, interest appropriate even um, uh, reading level appropriate yeah. uh, and take advantage of that. And they should try to read something every single day. Um, uh, you can never get too old to do some reading aloud as well. 
because again, as the students are, are continuing to read and, and read frequently and read um, uh, um, something that of interest, then it will continue to enhance their ability to be prepared for the curriculum uh, that will be um, set before them in September. Absolutely. You have anything to add, Alfred? Mm -hmm. No, reading, reading. That's a good, that's a good reading tip for is, everyone. <laughs> reading will take the child where you either go. So they spend time reading. I mean, they can freshen up on their math and everything else, but reading sure. definitely helps in science, helps in social studies, helps in all of those different areas, ELA, so English language arts. So reading is definitely the fundamentals. If they spend that time reading, it'll keep increasing their knowledge, their vocabulary, everything keeps them sharp. That's great. So are, is there any room left in the cohorts for the summer? Someone watching is if they're interested in getting their child involved in the summer, what should they do to learn more and find out if there's space, not only for the summer, but for the fall? www.lamontacademy.org. They should go on, they should enroll, and they should en enroll, bring all their documents. Again, we're being digital, so everything's easy. They can upload the birth certificates, all the documents that we need, ID, proof of address, and get their child registered. And we still have time for the cohort, for the second or third cohort. Um, so we are really, really, really excited that they can just go on, scan the link, or there's, just, there's different ways to get on, but just yep. get on the website and enroll, because we still have seats left. And we have, we have Chromebooks ready for the children, we're excited. We're just excited. We want to give them all what they need, all the tools, all the essentials to move them to the next level. That's great. Well, I appreciate both of your time and, and this great information and definitely feel the excitement. I'm looking forward to what's next. I guess the next time we get together, we'll um, have some info on how the first cohort went. But um, do you well, have any, any parting words? Yep. We, we are starting construction for those who may live in the community of East Flappish in Brownsville. We are recreating the whole uh, fourth floor of PS219 of a real technology base and interactive rooms where children can really soar and enjoy their educational experience. And so we have huge construction of half a million dollars coming going in, brand new technology, over $180,000 in technology and infrastructure. So yes. We are doing everything we can to make sure when they come into that building, when brick and mortar opens up after COVID, they'll see a whole new place. Wow, it's exciting. Well, thanks, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.